Hello, and welcome to another rousing edition of Meow This with your friendly TA, Ray. And introducing my perfect new assistant, Cirque. Meow, today we'll be talking about subcortical anatomy. So we know the three basic parts. So we have the hindbrain, we have the midbrain, and the forebrain. Now first, we'll start with the hindbrain. Notice that it looks like a snail, all through here. And the snail is following the hind in the race. So we'll start with this big beauty. You may recognize this one as the cerebellum. But do you know what it does? Well, let's start with this fine bell. And this fine bell is out for a ride on her motorbike. We're talking about her fine motor skills. But oh no! Pay attention, Belle. Oh, she lost her balance and she crashed. Balance. Fine motor skills and balance. Belle and cerebellum. Next, we have the reticular formation. Now, you may notice this is a distinct formation that looks a lot like a fence. I like to imagine counting sheep jumping over the fence. As you can tell, this means levels of wake and sleep, levels of arousal, reticular formation, counting sheep. Now next, we have the pawns. The pawns is part of this big P looking structure and it's the part that looks like it could be a pond. So we have our ferryman here. And so this represents what the pond does. So it ferries information from the cerebellum, picks up a book from Bell's library, takes that information and takes it around to the rest of the brain, connecting the cerebellum to the rest of the brain. The pond's. You may notice that part of the pons has a different color to it. I didn't mark it because it's not marked on your worksheet and I want you to be able to know this. Now this is called the medulla. What it looks like is sort of the word metal, like meddling. But this isn't anything that we would want meddled with because the medulla is responsible for things like the heart. We heart the medulla. It's responsible for circulation, heartbeat, and respiratory systems. No meddling with the medulla. We heart the medulla. Excellent. Now we're going to talk about the midbrain in a lot further detail. Notice it looks like an upside down M, midbrain. Now first, we're going to talk about the tectum. Now we're going to represent it by some techie thumbs. What do we think of when we think of thumbs? For our purposes, we're going to think of sensation on the thumb. So this is a sensory input. <laughs> it's also Look at me! Look at me! I'm some cool thumbs! It's our orientation response, much like ringing the bell in class. So we're orienting to the stimulus. Tectum, techie thumbs, filtering that information. His partner in crime. DJ Tegmentum. Now, DJ Tegmentum likes when you move it, move it with his dope beats. What? That's because it's chock full of neurons that produce dopamine. Tegmentum and tectum 
holding down the midbrain. Got that? Meow. Moving on to the more complicated structures of the forebrain, if you please. Now, the first thing you might notice is something familiar. We're talking about the trusty corpse coliseum, or corpus callosum. If you recall, it looks like a coliseum surrounding the other parts of the forebrain, and it also connects the two hemispheres of the brain, like two gladiators in battle. Now, underneath all of this, there seems to be a strange looking worm. A worm that works its way in and sucks the brain out through the ear. It sucks away your memories. But we know where new memories are made from HM. We know that it's the hippocampus. The worm is the hippocampus. Now, what's this egg sitting here on the hippocampus? Well, of course it's related. We're talking about the amygdala. Is that a snake? Is it a garden hose? I need a threat detector. Amygdala! Amygdala! Now, the connection here is, though it's misunderstood as the emotional center of the brain, this is not the case, it does, in fact, assign emotional meaning to memories. Amygdala! Detecting the threats, making memories count. This big beauty right here is our thalamus, or our thumb on a bus. As we learn from DJ Tech Tom with the Techie Thumbs, thumb, for our purposes, is representing sensation, senses. So this is a hub, a relay station, taking sensory information and sending it to the correct parts of the brain, such as the visual association cortex, or primary visual cortex. So this relay station, just to remind you, sensory. This relay station is simply for the cerebellum. Now, this rock star, thumb on a bus, does a lot of work. He deserves some hype. We're talking about the hype man, the hypothalamus. Right here, hyping it up. So what's the hype man say? Oh, we need some drink. We need some snacks. We're hungry. We're thirsty. We got sex drive. It's hot in here. Ooh, body temperature. Ooh. So we're talking about motivational behavior and body temperature. Hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Now the last little piece to our puzzle is simply the pituitary gland. It's just dangling over a pit, part of the endocrine system. Now you may think it's over, but wait, there's more. Meow, what could possibly be missing from this scene? It's the spaceship, the basal ganglia. Meow, where does this go? right on top, right on top of the thalamus, riding along the hippocampus. We're talking basal ganglia. We got our base chakra gang holding it down with intentional movement. Intentional movement. It's our basal ganglia. All right, y'all, it's been fun. Now have a good weekend.